a blessed morning to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to fellowship, relationship, and worship. We are here at the Holy Savior Parish this morning. Our celebrant will be Father Ayo Ayombe. Our lay minister will be Sparker Rushford Games from the Good Shepherd Anglican Church. I am Deacon Gregory A. Jack from the St. Thomas Parish. Our opening hymn, CPWI 347, The Church of God, A Kingdom Is. was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and blessed, blessed be, be his, his kingdom, kingdom now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Together we say, bless the Lord, bless the Lord and, Father, and Father. We have, we have assembled, assembled in your name and in, and in fellowship, fellowship with, with one, one another. another. And it was by your grace to offer the sacrifice, the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Call it of purity together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to you, you all hearts, hearts are open, open all desires desire known, and from, from you no secrets secret are hidden. hidden. Cleanse the thought of our hearts by the inspiration, inspiration of, your of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that, that we may perfectly love you, love you and what we magnify your, your holy name through, through Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Gloria, in essences together, we say, glory, glory to, God to God in the, the highest, highest and peace to his, to his people, people on earth. On earth. Lord, Lord God, ever the King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Father Lord, Lord God, God, Lamb of God, you take, take away the sin of the world, world. Have, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right, right hand, hand of the Father. Father. Receive our prayers, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our collect for today. As we all know, that today is night Sunday after the Pentecost. In our prayer book, page 176, let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of our wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorant asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not, and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Word of God, written in Second Samuel, chapter 7, beginning at verse 1 through 14. When David, the king, was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you. Who shall come forth from your body? And I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, 
and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. You're invited to turn to your book of common prayer, page 584 for our gradual psalm, Psalm 89. And this morning we pray verses 20 to 37. I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. My hand will hold him fast, and my arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, you are my father, my God and the rock of my salvation. I will make him my firstborn and higher than the kings of the earth. I will keep my love for him forever and my covenant will stand firm for him. I will establish his line forever and his throne as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law and do not walk according to my judgments, if they break my statutes and do not keep my commandments, I will punish their transgressions with a rod and their inequities with the lash. But I will not take my love from him, nor let my faithfulness prove false. I will not break my covenant, nor change what has gone out of my lips. Once for all, I have sworn by my holiness. I will not lie to David. His line shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall stand fast forevermore like the moon, the abiding witness in the sky. Amen. A reading from the Word of God written in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you 
who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord, thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. Our sequence in CPWI, number 247, at the name of Jesus, and we sing this morning verses 1, 3, and 7. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to a land, a Genesaret, and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about the whole region and began to bring sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, 
into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, you are immortal God, invisible God, the only wise. We are in your presence at this moment to hear from you, not from any man. Speak to us today and help us to understand. In the name of God the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What a privilege it is to be alive this morning to hear from our Lord once again. And the topic of our message says, the plan of God for our lives versus our desire. I'm quite sure someone out there will agree with me that God's plans and our desire always conflict each other. But mostly it happens to us that we allow our desire to conflict with God's plan for our lives. Many times, we plan, we aspire because God enables us. But it always happens that we leave God out of the picture. We leave God behind of our plans. We don't remind ourselves that we are finite beings. We cease to remind ourselves that we are mortal beings. We cease to remind ourselves that He is the maker and we are His creature, His being, His servant. And He would like to talk to us all the time. And He would like to reveal to us what His plan and purpose for our lives. No wonder someone says, God's plan is always more beautiful than our desire. Why? Because we are short-sighted. Because we know nothing. Without him, we are nothing. Let us remind ourselves of an Old Testament reading this morning. Look at the story of David. A man of God. A warrior. One who appreciated God so much, he had finally brought the ark of God down to Jerusalem. Then he had a quest. What was his quest? His desire was to build God, a magnificent building to place the ark of God. I'm quite sure to anyone who said, this guy, oh wow, what a good plan. But unfortunately, that wasn't the plan of God. But I thank God for David. Whenever he plans any things to be put in place, he always consults God. David reminded himself, I can't move an inch without his permission, without instruction. But unfortunately, many of us today, we don't even consult God. We don't even think about prayer. We don't even think about hearing from him. Instead of talking to God, we relied on so many books to guide and lead us. Fortunately, our dear brother David consulted his prophet, brother, prophet Nathan. Nathan also said, okay, so quite good. But at night, God revealed to Nathan and said to him, tell my servant David, he shouldn't do that. Why? Because... God's plan for David, for his descendants, and for the whole land of Israel, more better than his own desire. His desire was to build a magnificent temple at that time, but for God, the plan of God was for David to work hard, to unite his people, and also to wage war and conquer his enemies. Sometimes we have better ideas, but we use wrong methodology. My dear sister, my dear brother, it is good to aspire. God enables us to desire. 
God enables us, give us the, that potential that we could see that and think brilliantly to be proactive thinker, but we shouldn't forget that we are children of God. We shouldn't forget that we have maker, we have creator up there that needs to guide, lead us. What should we need to do to verify our plans, our desire, our quest, if it's in tune with God's plan? until we go to him and pray to him. Not just only praying, we should take time to hear from him, just like what David did. My dear sister, my dear brother, someone say God's purpose always interrupts our plans many times, provided we allow that to happen, because we don't plan well. Because we don't allow God to lead us to plan. We have our own thing and we desire to do our things in our own way. Sometimes we allow the flesh to, to prompt our heart and mind to desire fleshy things. But God's plans for us is so better, beautiful than our desire. And God said to him, dear servant David, I have better plans for you. I know you desire to do a very good thing by putting, to, to put this ark in that temple, which also signifies my presence in your means. But I've been with you all this while. Have I ever asked you? But don't worry. Even though God didn't say, but let me say it, probably because of this desire. At this time, at that point, God made a covenant with David. He said, I will let your dynasty reign forever and I've prepared someone out of your body to, who will build me that temple which you envision I know many theologians talk about Jesus fine but within the context God has prepared someone called Solomon to do that near future David didn't fight it David prepared all the materials waiting for his leading, who is going to be? And who is that person you have raised? Dear brother, dear sister, if only we remind ourselves according to the gospel of Matthew from chapter, chapter 11, verse 28 to, to 30, when the Lord says, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and with every laden, I will give you rest. But how many people go to God? How many people... Think of communicating with God. How many people take their aspirations to God? How many people take their desires to God to verify them if they are in tune with God? Many don't. And that is the desire of God that we should always get in touch with him. If you look at our New Testament reading, the gospel reading precisely, we saw that the disciples of Christ, they have worked so hard. When they came to their master, they were hungry and they were looking for a place to have some rest. That was their quest. Definitely some say, yes, you need a date. Even doctor says we need to rest. But the God's plan for the people who are around them was to get them free because we have so many people around them that are still, I mean, waiting upon his touch. There are so many harassed by demonic forces and God's plan was to set them free at that time. But the desire of, of Jesus' disciple was to have a place to rest. But God says, it's not yet time. How many people today they prepare to retire before time, before the actual time, but yet God says not yet, but they argue with God. How many people today are about to leave their marriage just for a few trials and challenges? How many people today are about to, I mean, leave their place of work to opt for another job without asking God, should I remain, should I go, or should I wait for something you have prepared for me? No wonder Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 3 verse 3, it says, pray to me and I will reveal to you great and mighty things which you do not know. But how many people ask from God? How many people ask God guidance? 
In our consumption, we believe that God is too slow. Even sometimes we say we don't understand God's plan. Yes, we do not. That is why we need to talk to him all the time in order to align our desire, our quest with his plan. So that we verify our aspiration. It is good to aspire. Not for our selfish motives, but the purpose is to inspire someone before we expire. Because no matter how much we are, we find ourselves so strong today, we should understand that everything we have here on earth shall expire one day. And that is why our aspiration, our, des our desire should be based on our selfish motives. Because without him, we are nothing. The disciples of Christ Jesus, they took a boat to find a solitary place. But because it wasn't God's plan for them to have rest at that time. And it was God's plan for these people arise by demonic forces to be set free. God enabled the people, they still follow them by on foot. And when they arrived at Genesaret, I'm quite surprised they were happy. Oh, finally we've got a place to rest. But unfortunately, these guys are already waiting for them because someone said to himself, someone said to herself, today is my day of miracle. How many people come to church believing God for miracle? Many people are already lo losing the mind, that sense of God's presence in the church. You can see those guys, they worked so hard. They didn't want to take no for answer for an answer because they believe they are so convicted in their heart that their miracle is here. Why? Because it is God's purpose for them to get their miracle. And indeed, many of them were touched. My dear sisters, my dear brother, have you been waiting for God's touch in your life? Be it for healing, be it for life partner, be it for promotion, be it for your family or for marriage. Why can't you wait for him? Don't hope for another option because God's plans for you is better, beautiful than your desire. That's why someone says, trust God's plan even when it doesn't align with our plans. Yes. Trust God's plan. Even though it's somehow difficult, it's not even going in your way. Remember a story of a man, the guy who invented the first antibiotic, I mean, antibiotic medicine. You know, this great scientist was in the lab. He was working on something in order to produce a medicine meant for flu. And he worked tirelessly, but nothing worked out. Then he, he, he went on leave. He abandoned everything and threw the things in the rubble. But some other scientists came into that same lab. What these scientists thrown away became the first antibiotic ever produced. You see God's plan. Dear sister, are you losing it? Dear brother, are you losing it? It is good to aspire, but never leave God behind. It is good to plan. So many books say so, many authors, many books about God's plan. But we shouldn't forget that God's plan is real. We shouldn't forget, even though it's important, that we should also plan. We shouldn't leave God out. We shouldn't leave it behind our plan. And I would say, learn to plan with God. Verify your vision. Verify your desire. No matter how beautiful or how, 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 how good it sounds to you, nothing like going to God, just like David. I, imagine the plan of David. You can hear him through that reading. It deserves something good, but God said, because you are a warrior and your hands are stained with blood, someone with clean hands should lay the foundation of my temple where my presence will dwell forever. Dear sister, dear brother, is that not really true? That the plans of God for our lives always conflict sometimes with our desire. Why do you think many people pray today without receiving from God? 
not because God hate them, but we fail to do what David did. David realized what others neglected. David did what that other faced to do. David walked with God. David carried God along with his plan. David consented God, even though he loved that desire. And David allowed God's plan for his life and for his people to prevail over his desire. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have received today. Amen. Amen. And God bless you. We continue with the Nicene Creed, which can be found on page 104 in the Book of Common Prayer. We say together, We, we believe, believe in one God, God the Father, the, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen or unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one in being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was, he was born, born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In fulfillment of the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the Holy Catholic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Our intercessory prayers this morning. We continue to pray for the Church of God in our Anglican commune. We especially pray for our House of Bishops in the province of the West Indies. We pray that they We'll continue to make some decisions of our existence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to extend prayers for our brothers and sisters within the Caribbean who are still recovering and being restored from the effects of the hurricane barrel. We pray, oh God, that you will give them all that sense of character and conviction to keep on keeping on. For we know, dear God, you have told them during the storm that they should just hold on to Jesus and ride out the storm. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In our own diocese here in Trinidad and Tobago, we continue to lift up our own dear Bishop, Berkeley. We pray, O oh God, that he be in our chief shepherd, that he will be strengthened that he will be fortified so that he can lead our people in spirit and in truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray also for all our clergymen and women. We pray that God, you being that great healer, that you will reach out and touch each and every one of us and our families. Strengthen us so that we can bring your word to the people of God throughout Trinidad and Tobago. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. And in all things you say, dear God, we must give thanks. And we give you thanks and praises for the restoration of our Ashdeacon, Father Primus, Ashdeacon South. Thank you, dear God, for the healing hands that you have touched by way of the doctors, the nurses, and all the caregivers. Thank you, dear God, for returning him to us so that he can continue to lead our people, especially those in South, in spirit and in truth. 
Lord in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Today, in our diocese, we also pray for the parish of St. Mark Point Fourteen. The ordinary, the Reverend Father Harold Dickerson and the Reverend Father Dean Husbands. We also pray for a renewal ministries. We lift up in prayer all of our lay ministers who are in training, and we thank you, dear God, for them answering their call to serve. May they be strengthened and may they be equipped adequately so that they can continue in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. Let us pray for all those in our parishes who are sick. Let us pray for the housebound. Let us pray that there will be sufficient workers in the vineyard so that we can visit all those who are unable to come to the church houses, all those who are unable to move around within the margins, we pray, O oh God, that you will reach out and touch them and anoint them, bless them and lift them up spiritually and physically. These prayers we offer to you in Jesus' almighty name. Let the people of God say, Amen, amen. and Amen. Act of Penitence, page 123. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, our God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Before we have our corporate confession, why can't you spend your shortest time individually talk to your father, confess to him, is ever willing to have mercy? As we corporately confess together, page 124 from, from B, together we say, most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against, against you in thought, word, and, and deed, by, by what, what we have done, done and by what, what we have left undone. undone. We, we have not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, we have not loved our, our neighbor, neighbor as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are, we are truly sorry, sorry and we humbly repent. repent. For the sake of, of your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and, and forgive us, that we may delight in your will, will and walk in your ways to the, to the glory, glory of your, of your name. name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver from all your sins, confirm and strengthen all goodness, and keep your life eternal through Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are using from C as we share peace together. The kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy inspired by Holy Spirit. They who thus serve Christ are acceptable to God and approved by others. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. And also with you. Why can't you share with one another? Peace. 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 <laughs> the offertory hymn, CPWI number 476, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is.
bless our substances, we use prayer B. All together we say, Father, we, we offer, offer you these gifts which you have given us, us, this bread, this wine, this money. We then we offer ourselves and our lives and our work to become through your Holy Spirit a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice as this bread and wine become the body and the blood of Christ. So may we and all your people become channel of your love through St. Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give God thanks and praise. praise. It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give it to the almighty, everlasting God. Because on this most glorious day, a triple light was given on the first day of creation, you brought light and life into being. And on the first day for our salvation, you raised your son victorious over death. And on this day, you gave your only and life-giving spirit to your church. Therefore, we praise you, join our voices with angel archangel, with all companies of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of power, heaven and earth are full of, of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Prayer E, page 142. Sovereign Lord and Father, to you be glory and praise forever. In your boundless wisdom, you brought creation into being. In your great love, you fashion us in your image. In your tender compassion, you send your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, to share our human nature. And the power of the Holy Spirit, you overcame the power of sin and death and brought your people to new birth as first fruit of your new creation. On the night that was betrayed, it took bread. And when he has given thanks to you, he broke it. And gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant, which is shared for you. For many, for the forgiveness of sins, whatever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to the command of your dearly beloved Son, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer you, Father, as sovereign of thanks and praise, send your Holy Spirit on this gift of bread and wine, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. And as we partake of this holy for the life, may your Holy Spirit enter into our priesthood with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Christ the King, Holy Savior, St. Martin, St. John's, and all your sons and daughters who share an inheritance through Jesus Christ, our Lord, with him, and in him, and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we work by the Almighty, with all who stand before you, in earth and heaven, and the song of everlasting praise, blessing, blessing and, and honor, honor, and glory, and, and power, power, be yours forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
for, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, yours now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we, we are, are many, we are one, one body because we all share in one, one bread. bread. Lamb of God, you, you take away the sin of the world. world. Have, mercy have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Our souls will feast and be satisfied. And we would sing glad songs of praise to him. Our communion hymn, CPWI, hymn number 583. Faithful shepherd, feed me. of God as we joyfully say our post-communion prayer together we say Almighty Thank Father you. we thank, thank you for, you for feeding, us feeding us with the body and, and the blood of your son Jesus Christ, Christ. may we, we who share his, his body live his risen, risen life we who we drink, drink his cup bring life, life to others, others. we upon whom your spirit shines shine, give, give light to, to the world, world. Help, Help us, us to continue, continue in faith and witness to your word. To your so, so we and your children, your children shall be free. And the whole earth live, live to praise your name. name. Through, Through Christ, Christ our, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, thank you so much for having time to join us online today. But as we seek the face of God for his blessing, why can't you spend your shortest time to talk to your master? In line with the word of God this morning about God's plans for our lives and looking at our desires. Talk to God. Are there things you are seeking for? Ask him. The spirit of truth lead you into all truth give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the word and the works of God. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our recessional hymn, CPWI, hymn number 370, King of Glory, King of Peace.
cried, Thou didst clear me, and on morn when they replied, Thou didst hear me. Sepult is not what is them, I will praise thee. In my heart, though not in Thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning. We know you have been blessed and touched by, by the word and the mass entirety. I, and I believe God Almighty will perfect all the blessings you have received. I would like to take you through a few notices. I mean, here at Holy Savior, coming 28th of this month, if you would like to join us, is our Emancipation Day on the 28th. Of this month our choir they are preparing vigorously for that day would you like to listen to many african songs why can't you join us and on the 11th of august is our patronage service for holy savior church we are blessed to have we're going to have the presence of our dear archdeacon from tobago archdeacon isaac on the 11th of august would you like to join us why can't you try to come what about our harvest is coming up on in October, on the 4th of October, what a privilege indeed we'll be having the presence of the Right Reverend Dr. John Orina Omangi, the Dawson Bishop of the Upper South Nyanza, all the way from Kenya, East Africa, will be our preacher and also the chief celebrant. Dear friends, Holy Savior is a place where we have something for everyone. If you'd like to join our midweek services, we have here at Holy Savior, 6.30 every Friday, and at St. John, 7 o'clock, probably on Sunday, you desire to join our services. Every 7 o'clock, join me and Reverend Michelle at St. John Peterborough. Probably you prefer 9 o'clock service, join us here at Holy Savior. Probably you prefer 10.30 service at Mondo, Christ the King, we are there. And probably you are even busy on Sunday, you would like to join our service on Saturday, even though we are not Seventh-day Adventists, we are proud Anglicans. Join us at St. Martin in Maracas Valley at 4.15. Thank you and God bless you.